Well, I guess you just have to be prepared to die. Well, what? Pay attention. Get off your cell phones. Pay attention. I'm doing extraordinarily well. Thank you. Good, good. Perfect, man. Well, uh, so I know you got some dates coming up in old uh, Tejas. Do you want to go ahead and? Yeah, um, I will actually be in Austin at the Creek and Cave Theater the 28th and 29th of October. If you're in Seattle, I will also be at the Triple Door with Heather McDonald on September 10th and 11th. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I've got some Texas states coming up in October, the week before Creek and Cave with Jim Jeffries. I'll be in Austin, Dallas, and that's it. I'm, going, I'm doing New Orleans, Austin, Dallas, and Oklahoma City, but those are my Texas states, yeah. And is that that's with Jim Jeffries? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And awesome. I'm doing I'm doing four shows headlining at Creek and Cave on my own. Okay. Yeah. 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 I got you. Perfect, yeah. man. Perfect. Well. Uh, yeah. I mean, is it I nice to be? Around. I'm a I'm a big comedy slut. Everyone's <laughs> everyone's passing me around. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, is it nice to be able to finally start like getting back? Because I mean, were you able to do anything during you know like the whole shutdown? Uh, besides cut myself, no, uh, no, I, uh, no, I'm not promoting self mutilation. No, I, um, it was hard because I was on tour, um, and then it just stopped. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember there was just kind of this confusion of like, well, what do we do? <laughs> like, we all were like calling each other, like, you know, so and so's tour is canceled, so and so's tour is canceled. And, you know, I remember a friend of mine's like tour got picked up again and then, you know, COVID happened again. It's like, just kidding. 2022, like it's been a mess, but we've all kind of yeah. like, we've all kind of like evolved with the times, I guess. A lot of people were doing like mm -hmm. backyard shows. Um, a friend of mine, Tammy Jo Deeran, she was running a show at the Magic Castle here in Hollywood. They did like a, like a, like a, um, like it was like a drive-in yeah so a whole but it was really weird it was like cars were pulling in and so we were on this like stage that looked like like a rascal flats video um <laughs> like with like edison bulbs so i was like I, or, is there a barbecue here no there's not great um and uh it was weird because like they couldn't honk because there's like you know residences around it so it was yeah. like, so they had like these little clappers and they were like Oh They're God, like, this, is, this is really weird. So some people adapted yeah. to that. Some people were just like, I am never doing this again. Yeah. Um, but it was great because it kind of kept us sharp and it kind of kept us like, mm -hmm. okay, this is what we do. But at the same time, it was like, once everything, because I mean, we went through here in LA, we went through like, shit, I think it was like two lockdowns where we were like, okay, we're back. Just kidding. And now, you know, we're yeah. kind of, questioning are we going to get another one um but everyone's kind of taking the proper precautions but you know you have to show your covid card you've got to yeah. have like which i think that's what should have been done in the first place call me crazy uh <laughs> call me a leftist liberal with a, a hidden agenda um <laughs> but yeah. um I was like, God forbid. And uh, so now it's just kind of getting into this thing where we're this like post COVID or, you know, still kind of a COVID world where we don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. But I think we're all just kind of so sick and tired of hearing about it. I know I am. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, I went, um, I went on a camping trip last week where I just had to like get the, can I cuss? Sure. The fuck out of town. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, I, I went camping um, with a tent and a mm -hmm. bucket and <laughs> sat on a river and uh, had no phone reception. I had no yeah. mask. 
I was, you know, we didn't talk about COVID. It was awesome. It was just yeah. the river and the stars and it was awesome. That's all. Yeah. It's, it's fucking mind numbing. Like just having to deal with it. I mean, I can't imagine if like your livelihood is based on kind of almost hearsay of like, well, maybe you're going to have a gig. Maybe you're not like that's yeah. gonna be fucking, Oh God. Are yeah. you, have you thought about like moving back to Texas along with, no. you know, everybody else? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of my friends did. And they're just, like, I know, you know, it, it's, it's uh, a buddy of mine. I don't know if you know, Brian Redband. Yeah. 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 So he, he hits me up every now and then, cause I'll get like care packages from like fans from Texas uh -huh. I had I had you know I've got the um, what did I I got recently this week I got the spicy ketchup the jalapeno ranch <laughs> and the and the uh, creamy pepper sauce from Whataburger. There you go. And then, yeah. got, like, and then I got the green sauce from H E B. What else did I get? I got like, mm -hmm. all, like it all came back when I came home. I was like holy crap. And then I got the flour tortilla candle from H E B. <laughs> and and I took a picture of it and put it on my Instagram and Brian Redman's just like come home and i'm like dude <laughs> you can't just tell me to come home you're in my home like yeah dude yeah, i are all in austin now i know i i am real maybe i shouldn't be skeptical but i'm kind of skeptical about how that's all gonna work out it just doesn't really? seem like <laughs> yeah yeah i know <laughs> it just doesn't seem like you know a great place for comedy because there's not there's never really been much of anything i mean there's like yeah austin has like live music for yeah you know failed musicians but that's God, about they're it. not failed ish <laughs> nah, okay <laughs> i don't know i mean i feel like it's like it's it's like you know it's like nashville it's like i think i love austin i think austin yeah. is a really cool city i love i love i love the fact that i got the chance to grow up in texas i'm very texas proud but mm -hmm. i get it you know it's like yeah. You know, I I had a great childhood in Texas. I had a great, you know, growing up. But it's like if I went back, I don't know. Like unless if I was like Joe Rogan, you know, who has who's like set yeah. for multiple lifetimes. It's like yeah, it's a great place to raise your kids. It's a great place mm -hmm. to have land. It's a great place to you know, if you've got the money to do it, yes, go for it. Live like. Go go big. Like Tom Segura and Christina Pazitsky are there now. And yeah. like one of my favorite things is watching Tom just like like have an orgasm every time the thunder claps there. And I'm like, <laughs> so just be like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I'm like, I know that's like the one thing I miss about Texas is thunder Dude, It's sure. doing that like right now. And that yeah. is the first thing that came to my mind was like, I have a similar love for this shit, like thunderstorms and stuff. Oh my like god, that. I miss it yeah. so much. It's like the one thing I miss. I miss like being a kid and like your whole house shaking, and you're like, ah, <laughs> and like oh, yeah. the minute like we get a drop of rain here in LA, which is every nine years. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone just loses their shit, and they're like, "How are we oh, going to yeah. function during this downpour?" <laughs> And I'm like, re relax. Yeah. Dude. Oh, yeah. And I grew up in a trailer, you know, so I really got to experience it. Shake it uh, down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, if you if you want to hang up now, I understand. But, you know, that <laughs> no, please. I have no I have no, no problem with trailer culture. Please do It's a oh, it's an interesting culture for sure. A lot of Kid Rock fans. Oh, yeah. Whether those things are friends, related. A lot of friends of mine are actually like looking into that, like going out to the desert and just like getting a trailer and just, you know doing it i'm like hey no shame in the game do not it's not care. a bad move it's yeah. not a bad move at all yeah yeah no i can i can understand not wanting to come back you know i mean you've already like you said you've already done this shit like i want to come back and visit like i could do yeah i could do like i think i'm going to stay there for like a week when i get out there because i've got i've got the shows mm -hmm. and then i'm going to go from oklahoma city to austin stay in austin maybe go back home to san antonio see some friends mm -hmm. that i haven't seen while and then go back up to austin and, and do the shows on uh thursday friday and then yeah. i'm heading to uh memphis to see my family which weirdly enough lives in tennessee now yeah like well that's right. that's been kind of a thing is it like california to texas texas to tennessee mm -hmm. like it's actually kind of common just sort of weird but 
Yeah. It's like that Jody Messina song, but, <laughs> but but not Carolina. It's like heads yeah. Tennessee, tails California. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you know that song, or are you too young for that song? I mean, I know it, but I probably am also too young for it. So yes. I mean, nineties yeah. country music is my jam. Oh yeah, I'm a big Brooks and Dunn fan. You know, Neon Moon will that'll mm-hmm. get you there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it will get you there. No, yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Dude, so, like, I'm just, I'm fascinated by, I mean, comedians in general, like, the whole idea of, like, which I'm just kind of curious, like, what it was like for you. Because I imagine you were probably the funny friend. Is that, like, fair to say? You know what I mean? Like, there's always one friend who can make everybody laugh, who's, like, always on. Like, is that you? Or was that you? Uh... Yes. It, yes. It got to the point where it was annoying to people. Um, <laughs> for sure. I was always the class clown in school and I was always the, uh, I don't know, the, the look at me, attention, attention, attention. Mm-hmm. And then, um, thank God I've had some friends to kind of ground me and be like, Hey, like, calm mm-hmm. the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. So like now I know like when to turn it on, when to turn it off. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a gift. It's truly, and it's a, it's a great mm-hmm. lesson because you don't want to be like that person, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely like off-putting for a while for some people because it was just like, <laughs> I've got something funny to say. And they're like, Justin, God damn it, shut up, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, see, I, I was, I'm kind of the same way. Like I didn't, like I wanted to be like rebellious but I was too afraid to fight people. Like I'm afraid to get in a fight. I'm afraid oh, to like. Fear. I have a bit dude, of. I have a bit on stage about it right now. Yeah, I am horrified, and I'm a you know decently big. Well, I won't exaggerate. Like I'm a huge dude, and I. But I'm afraid of like I'm so terrified of getting in a fight. Like I'm I'm a bitch when it comes to that. I was actually having a conversation with uh, Jessica Michelle Singleton last night at the comedy store about getting into a fight I, and I and it's so funny you say that because it's just the thought of someone like I'll watch videos of like someone just punching someone's face and I've never blacked out either I mean I blacked mm-hmm. out but I haven't yeah. blacked out, <laughs> yeah. like, out. Yeah. Um, and just the thought of just like being okay and then all of a sudden like lights out and like hitting uh, around terrifies me it's that it's the second hit it's the I'm a, so afraid of because I've I know someone who got in a fight and he is now in a wheelchair his oh, mom yeah. takes care of him. and it was and you know it was just because he hit the concrete and it's just snapped back and like that's the fear like getting punched in the face I mean I'm it's got to suck pretty bad but like it's that part it's that knockout and you don't know what's going to happen to you when you're knocked out like somebody might kick you i don't know uh, did it, they get arrested no, no what so he's in a wheelchair the other guy's like walking around yeah yeah That's i know cool. both of them and you know they're well one's doing you know all right but yeah it's this shit is it's so scary to me so like i avoid it at all costs which i think is where like trying to be funny comes from like i'm not a comic by any i've never done stand-up i've never done anything i mean this is a comedy podcast but you know it's way different but i always was like kind of a class clown because i was like well yeah Yeah. otherwise people are going to like eat me alive because i was like a fat kid which i'm now a fat adult so you know that hasn't changed much but so did you did you have that too of just being like okay i'm gonna get made fun of if i'm funny maybe that'll go away uh yeah i mean For sure. For sure. That was definitely my defense mechanism was charm. (laughs) I remember, you know, in high school, it was, you know, I made sure I had every teacher, every teacher loved me. Everybody's parents loved me. Um, And I just kind of like used that as power just, you know, and I also had like really good manners. Like my, my parents raised me good. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> uh, clearly I learned a lot in school um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah I mean if I ever had like a bully or something um, I kind of use that to like embarrass them I don't know like some people mm-hmm. I mean, some people call it like shade or some people call it you know like uh, uh, like 
calling, you know, calling people out. I never like, I kind of mm -hmm. used it um, intellectually to make okay. them look stupid in front of people. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like if somebody was, if, you know, and I got called like, you know, gay slurs and, and you know, every, every, every kid got made fun of in school, but it was just mm -hmm. like, I made sure to like bounce around to like every click. Okay. I was never like, I was never in like, oh, I was, you know, I was the theater kid and I was, you know, the mascot and I was the homecoming king and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. I reason I got there is because it was like, I, you know, I, I, I hung out with the yeah. cheerleaders. I hung out with the band kids. I hung out with the ROTC kids. I hung okay. out with, you know, the, the, I don't, the nerds, the outcasts, yeah. you know, and, and, and in a weird way, we call kind of like connected. So were, were you doing that like consciously? Or was it just how you were? I've always been that way. Um, mm -hmm. Even my friends today were all very, very, very different. Even the, even, you know, mm -hmm. the comics that I, you know, hang out with, it's not very like, I don't have like a core group of like dude bros or like, mm -hmm. you know, girlfriends uh, or, 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 you know, female comedians. It's, I'm very mm -hmm. just like, oh, there's so-and-so, there's so-and-so, there's so-and-so, there's so-and-so. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, you know, it's... We're okay. all we're all doing our own thing, so it's not like I have like a core group of like, you know, yeah, my, my my inner circle. Right. See, I can. Yeah, that that I makes like, sense. I feel like that. I feel like that gets you in. It can get you in trouble, you know, because if like if somebody goes down, then then that whole circle is like getting looked at, you know, and it's like I, yeah. I just want to look over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I was kind of the same way. Like I, I didn't have a click, you mm -hmm. know, per se. Like, I, I mean, I was kind of like goth without the makeup. Yes. Were you really? And, oh yeah. 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 Like I was super into like Marilyn Manson and, uh, you know, typo negative. No, no. That's actually the one trailer trash thing about me that I don't fall into is that. Uh, yeah. I'm not a juggalo, surprisingly. Uh, yes. I know. I fit all the criteria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I fit the criteria. I was like really into like Eminem. Like mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he hates his mom. And, <laughs> and now we <laughs> like maybe I'll be a famous rapper. <laughs> like, he hates his mom. I dig this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you were like, you were like corn and like oh god like, yeah uh, new what, yeah lip biscuit like lip a huge biscuit. i do okay this is embarrassing but for no I, mean, I do a podcast with my friend justine marino and she's like the biggest lip biscuit fan and i just sometimes i just sit back and go just let her have a <laughs> moment Dude, let her i fred durst. i wanted to be fred durst so bad yeah. it made me like angry at god that I wasn't Fred Durst. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about that now? <laughs> uh, I've kind of loosened up my, my, my infatuation with Fred Durst a little bit. I think uh, as song, I've gone, huh? He is having like a little bit of a, he has a new song called Dad Vibes out. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. Yeah. I, I like to pretend that everything after like 2001 didn't mm -hmm. happen yeah. for him. So, yeah. but I look back and I'm like, oh God, I couldn't have picked like a worse person to want to be like, but you know, well, it is what it is. They were, they were like hot shit, you know, it's like Limp Bizkit, uh, Papa Roach, the, uh, yeah. Offspring, Corn. Like, Dude, people, yeah, people forget this, like that, because it's because Limp Bizkit's like a joke now, but people forget, like, if you watch TRL for five yeah. minutes yep. in the early 2000s, like you saw Limp Biscuit videos at least once. Like yeah. there's always at least one Limp Biscuit video. And that's, so. what, that's what the most amazing thing about TRL was. It was like, you'd get like Britney Spears sometimes and then it'd be like, now corn. And you're like, wait, what? Like it was yeah. just, here's Backstreet I, Boys with I Want It That Way. Now rolling by Limp Biscuit. <laughs> like, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And you'd have like Breathe by uh, Faith Hill. And yeah. then fucking, and then uh, like falling away from me from corn. You're like what the or like wait and bleed from Slipknot. You're like Jesus, yeah. I will say that was like the I think the last era of like diversity in mainstream music because now it's everything is rap, which I love rap. Like I have no issues with like rap, hip hop, whatever. But even like pop is rap, country is rap rock is i mean rock doesn't even exist but like 
everything is like so fucking like tight like yeah. into this one thing and i really hate it like i don't even i do too keep up. I, like, I i mean i'm like am i old and then i'm like oh yeah i guess i am but like i'm the same way it's like i grew up with 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 hip-hop and i grew up with genres and that's what i yeah. love about it it's like whenever somebody asks me like what my favorite music is i say you know i love i love 90s r and I love boy mm-hmm. bands i love pop princesses i love dave matthews band i love you know i love rock i yeah. love I love late '90s rock, you know, um, mm-hmm. Sade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, goes, it goes from like all, you know, jazz. I love '80s. Mm-hmm. I love, you know, classic '70s and '60s and '50s and old penny nickel slots. Um, no, I. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like yeah. now I just turn on the radio and I'm just like I I don't I don't know I don't know what I'm listening to. Like I'll get on TikTok yeah. and like which. Whew, I'll get on TikTok mm-hmm. and I'll hear these songs and then like I'll get in my car and I have like you know the 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 it, the uh, pop hits on uh-huh. my uh, uh, programmed in and it'll go on that yeah. and it'll it'll be I'm like oh my god I heard this song on TikTok now yeah. it's a song like it's a real well, song now what what I think like is when I realize that I'm like super out of touch with music is that people would say, oh, you got to listen to this song it's fuck it it's a banger it's amazing I listen to it my like, I don't like this and then they'll show me one like dude this song sucks and it's the it sounds the exact same to me so oh, yeah. I'm like i don't know the difference anymore like i don't yeah. know why people like this song and don't like this song yeah yeah like i, I, I mean I, that's the thing it's like you mentioned country music i was like i listen to i listen to like classic country you know i, I can't my my brother one of my brothers he uh <laughs> he, he, intru- he told me there's like a band like alabama floribama Floribama? <laughs> Floribama. Oh. Alabama floor. What is it called? Floribama Shore or something like that? Or no? Wait, it's a band? It's some band and it's like, and it's very like a knockoff, like kid rock meets like, like a, like a, I don't know, like a, a uh-huh. like, like Everclear at a Joe's Crab Shack, like on a Tuesday afternoon. It's just, it's just like a mess. I don't even know. Oh, if it's, it sounds it's, great. Yeah. It's something, you know, Florida Game Shore, I think, is a show. I'm trying to. Yeah, think that's what I was going to say. I was like, I think that's a show. Is it like Florida Georgia Line or something? Florida Georgia Line. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Same yeah, thing. I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, even like, you know, even rap too, I'm just like, I don't know. It's just very like monotone. It's just like, what is this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I've expressed my uh, loathing for Drake multiple times, but I think he's. I couldn't even tell you a Drake song. I I think he is almost solely responsible for for all of this shit. Yeah, he's Canadian. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah when in doubt blame canada you know yes, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah dude, i man i don't know i i really don't have a problem with not being in touch though like i'm i'll i'm fine with just putting on spotify and listening to corn yeah i don't give a shit if it's not popular anymore like i don't oh, care i, I don't do care. i will do a i'm gonna like try not to like wake up my alexa Oh, oh, okay. I'll I'll be like, like yesterday, I straight up, I was doing some writing and and getting, you know, because I just got back on Sunday. So I'm like catching Mm -hmm. up a week's worth of like emails and stuff. So I I just put on lithium on Sirius XM. Yeah. The greatest. Oh, it's that's my favorite. That's my favorite channel. Yeah. Oh, lithium. And I'll put on like Yacht Rock. I mean, just to tell you, like, I'll have like multiple. Yeah. Yacht Rock is like, yeah. And then I'll put on like, uh, what's the other one? Chill, which is just like, you know, uh-huh. just like house music and stuff. And I'm like, this, okay. is, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. Yeah. I, I can't, I can't, I can't listen to pop radio anymore. I think I that, like, like, I like pop artists now. Like yeah. I love Dua Lipa. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. uh, Jesse Ware. I like, you know, there's some good music out there, but I just, I can't like, I just think it's become so basic and so just, flat line and mm. it just i just feel like people are sheep because it'll be like oh this is the cool song and people are like okay you know and then they'll, yeah you know, if, if yeah. you don't like that song then you're you know you're the outcast and i'm like cool i'd rather be an outcast than a sheep i uh, most definitely and i i think that 
Like there's a, a whole other level of happiness that you can get to when you stop giving a shit about whether you are like listening to music that you should be listening to. Or like there were, there's so many bands that over like my life, I've tried to force myself to not like, because it's not okay to like, them. like Creed. Creed's fucking oh. amazing. But I, I've forced myself to not like them for a long time. And then I started listening to them because like, you know what? Fuck these people. This band's amazing. Well, and I think that goes to what you just said. I think that runs deep with like, not just music, with everything. When you stop just yeah. giving shit and like do whatever you like. Like, dude, I was in the car yesterday going to the gym and I, <laughs> I get in my car, um, 90s on 9 came on and mm -hmm. it was like the intro to Bailamos came on and I was like, <laughs> I am here for this. Like, you get that guitar and then he's like, Esta yeah. Noche Bailamos. I'm like, yes, Esta Noche Bailamos. Yeah, and then just like in the parking garage with the windows down, just like let the rhythm take you over by the like living my life. And Dude, people hey. are looking at me like, what the fuck is that guy on? I'm like, life, try yeah. it. Dude, is that's the best feeling is to just not care. It's yeah. like I like this shit. Like, I mean, it's it's like my kind of. It's not necessarily my theory, but like, I don't think anyone should have a guilty pleasure. Like, I think that idea of a guilty pleasure shouldn't exist. Oh, yeah. Like, if you, if you like it, you should be proud that you like it, you know? Like, oh, you mean like a, like a, like a, like a hidden secret? Yeah. You know, like, like, um, I mean, I've said both times, like, I'm a huge ABBA fan. And yes. for most people, they would not admit that they're an ABBA fan. It's like a guilty pleasure. I don't think you should have a guilty pleasure. I oh, think right. that if you're an ABBA fan, like myself, like, fuck yeah, I'm going to listen to Dancing Queen as loud as possible. And I don't really care if yeah. I look a little weird doing it. No, take out take out the word guilty and just make it a pleasure. Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah, it's like you're only here once. So why not enjoy mm -hmm. everything? Dude, exactly. What was your first concert? Oh, God. Um, my first concert was probably... Does a Six Flags show count? Probably. Not. Uh, <laughs> so my first concert was a um, was U two, I think. Oh, really? I went to U two. Yeah, it was the uh, I don't remember what tour it was, but yeah, that was that was hot. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom was smashing pumpkins. Oh, that's again. a good one. Too. Yeah, again, my uh, goth without makeup phase. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. a good one. I think that'd be a great one. And then and then I remember I went to, like. Uh, I went to Backstreet Boys in New Orleans. No shame. Fuck no, dude. Backstreet Boys are amazing. They were like, great. I was listening. I was listening to them like maybe two days ago. Like I made like a little early two thousands playlist, you know, of just like nostalgic shit. It's like God, Backstreet Boys were really fucking amazing. Oh yeah, like, they really were. Like, and I got into a, you know, and it's funny because like one of my friends now is you know Lance Bass, which <laughs> never never thought yeah. that would like happen, but it's just so funny because yeah. every now and then I'll just be like Backstreet Boys forever, and he's like fuck you Justin, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> like you know we have that little like you know, I was a huge Backstreet Boy fan, and then it's like you know as a kid growing mm -hmm. up I'm like oh here's in sync, and then you're like wait a minute, and then you get older and you're like wait what we're friends what okay that's weird so, that is yeah that's got to be strange. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, I mean, are there people that you've met that, you know, you become, I don't know. I mean, not even necessarily friends, but like in a somewhat friendly level, we were like, holy shit. Like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, Oh yeah. Like, I mean, like every, every day kind of, you know, yeah. like, like last night I was on stage, uh, you know, Anthony Jeselnik brought me up on stage and then like, I went up and then I brought up Eliza Schlesinger on stage and I'm just like, God damn it. I'm like sandwiched in between these like monsters. Jesus. Like, and you know, it's like, yeah, I've had, you know, when I met Joan Rivers, like that was, that was huge. Like, you know, oh, seeing yeah. her and having her remember me and she's like, Justin. And I'm like, Oh my God, what's going on? Um, uh, well, yeah. uh, I was at a party <laughs> not too long ago and like, Jay Leno walked in and I was like, what? where am I? And then I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like getting a drink at the bar and I look over and there's Lisa Vanderpump and she's like, hello, darling. And I'm like, oh my, what is happening? <laughs> it's a very, Jesus. it's a very weird, very weird world over here in LA yeah. for, sure, for sure. Yeah. 
I, I could see that. But that's, I mean, I don't know. That's got to be like kind of rewarding. And yeah. you know what I mean? Like just to be like, oh, like I've like, the I guess the term made it is sort of a weird term, but like it's, yeah. it's, a, it's like a recognition thing of like, wow, like, you know, I've my work is paying off sort of. Yeah. And I think I think that's like the realization of it now, especially like mm. after this like pandemic world where, you know, people are, uh, you know, I'm grateful that the, the, the clubs are like now paying attention and being because, you know, mm. beforehand it was like, you know, I would I would have. I would probably I probably have like. Two. Two spots a week at the comedy store, I'd have like a Friday original room show or a Friday main room show and then like a Saturday mm -hmm. uh original room show and it would either be really really early or it'd be really really late okay and now it's like you know everything's kind of gearing up and since people have moved away and sat uh, and and some people have been canceled um <laughs> it's giving us an opportunity for the younger guys or the the, mm -hmm. the guys who've been you know not the not the massive powerhouses but we're like you know at the bottom tier yeah to kind of move on up to that like you know now i have like wednesday through saturday in the main room 8 45 mm -hmm. 8 45 9 o'clock you know it's like right in the middle so it's getting me it's kind of like a workout because it's like yeah okay you have to follow anthony jeselnik or hey you're bringing up bill burr or like hey you're yeah you're like oh, oh, oh god <laughs> <And you're> like, <laughs> Like, wait what's happening it's it's moving too fast but it's 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 definitely like a like yeah. step up to the plate kind of a thing which i'm very very grateful for because it's like yeah. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes it keeps you sharp and then you know when you know anthony jeselnik who everybody knows and then he's like mm -hmm. hey justin Murdo's coming to the stage people are like who the fuck is that and then, <laughs> and then i get up on stage and i'm like hold on you're about to find out so yeah well so it's, it's been fun it, it's separate it's got to like separate the people who can handle it from the people that can't which ultimately yeah. i think is a good thing like a natural selection sort of thing yeah yeah i mean i guess so it's like it's like a um i mean we're all in it we're all in it together i mean it's crazy mm -hmm. because one of the biggest people that i was afraid of for the longest time was mark Marin. yeah and mark okay. Marin is just very mark Marin. he's just yeah. very like uh you see him and he's just, you know, he's just this like grumpy fella. <laughs> and like, he's very, um, uh, you know, he doesn't really, uh, he kind of tends to himself. He's just very like, who are you? Why should I give a shit? You know, I've kind been of here a, forever. You know, I do my like own a, thing. Like I'm a curmudgeon. A star. Yeah. Um, and so like, there have been nights when I have like seen him in the hallway or, or you know, going in or you know we're back to back and in, in, mm -hmm. in the green room or something like that and so now it's like he's just like justin how's it going and i'm just like me and, you know and he's just like yeah have you been so it's really nice to like you know now that everything's open get to know mm -hmm. these guys you know who have who've just yeah. kind of like walked past me for a couple of years or you know just whatever i don't know you hey you're yeah. famous, let's talk you know and it's it's just nice to kind of get reintroduced to that mm -hmm. crowd that I was not familiar with. Again, going back to the like jumping to the different, you know, friend yeah. groups, you know, and being introduced yeah. to different friend groups is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, when when you're writing, do you like as now that you've you know been doing stand up for a pretty good amount of time, like, can you tell when you're writing that something's going to work? Or do you still need to go up and actually test it out and find out like, is this gonna be funny? Yes. <laughs> to both. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I don't know. It's kind of like my writing is very like if I my writing is more like ideas and concepts. Okay. Where mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like I like being, I don't want it to sound too rehearsed. And I don't mm -hmm. want it to sound too scripted, like, oh, he wrote this down and I'm saying it word for word for word for word for word. Like some people okay. can do that and that's great mm -hmm. on that. But mine is very just physical and like, you know, I just want to get up there and just be real with people and have my persona and my physicality and, and, and my stage presence kind of like show through whatever that, whatever I'm talking about at that time. Okay. So 
if I get like a, if I have like, oh, I want to talk about, you know, white women being taped on planes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will just be like, let's let's talk about that. If I want okay. to talk about, you know, TikTokers waiting outside of Saddle Ranch um, to get yeah. in because it's the hottest club in LA now, and it's I don't know if mm-hmm. you're familiar with Saddle Ranch, but it's mm-hmm. a it is a uh, Texas Roadhouse um, restaurant that is on the Sunset Strip. Okay, and all the all the like TikTokers who you know are worth more uh-huh. than you know. <laughs> anything they drive away in bentley's they'll wait outside of this line to go into this like los or los angeles uh barbecue joint yeah and, uh, uh, okay it's the only place they can get in because they're not 21 so it's like 18 and up oh okay so you'll see like tmz out there with their cameras and be like hey hey yeah. you this tiktok star and they're like hey and you're like oh my god <laughs> blow everything up yeah <laughs> oh god yeah that's got to be frustrating as shit oh, yeah. so yeah um, you're like i'm like i'm like walking because I, I live right down the street from the comedy store so like i usually walk yeah there. and so i'll like and it, you have to like walk by sour and i'll just be like god damn it <laughs> you just see like you just see like these like lamborghinis and like these like like 16 year old kids getting out of them and you're like oh my god yeah how how do you think you would have handled that? Like if you were in that, you know, you at 16, if you had just blown up to that level. Cause I, I look at those kids and like, I, I would have been, I'd probably be dead. Honestly, oh, yeah. like I, I would have, sure, it would have went South. I would have blown like, out my 16 year old candles and had an aneurysm. <laughs> like it would have been it's just i mean it's just I, first of all i would my my parents would have not made me i don't know it's weird now because it's like social media so i was when i was a kid we didn't have social media so it's like yeah. so it's like you get these kids and like you know who now are on like tiktok and they can you they're like 16 and they they're like yeah <laughs> four million hits and all these sponsors are like take our products endorse here's money uh. And then, yeah. like, the parents are just kind of like, well, I guess our son or daughter is a TikTok star. And then yeah. they're like, hey, come out to L.A. We'll put you up in this big house. You're going to live this life. Here, you know, we're going to go to the hottest clubs. And, like, I don't know. I feel like the parents are just kind of like, okay, yeah, he's he's having a fun summer. But I'm, at the same time, I'm like, do you know how fucking dark L.A. really is? Like, uh, I'm here I mean, once. Well, the first time I moved out here, first time I moved out here, yeah, I, mean, I got caught up so fast that I was like, "This is this is this is way too much for me." Oh, and really? Like, like just kind of lifestyle sort of things, like just drugs and okay. sex and like uh, you know alcohol and yeah. just you know Monday night we're doing this, Tuesday night we're going here, Wednesday night we're going here, Thursday night we're going here. I was like, wait, I don't have a job. Like, yeah yeah you know and i was like i can't yeah. i can't do this it was way too much yeah you're kind of burning so, out well it's this illusion of like oh if i go out you know uh martin scorsese's gonna see me or like you know <laughs> like, yeah well, yeah, like, yeah if i walk down hollywood boulevard which is gross by the way yeah um you know i'm gonna run into to to paris hilton and we're gonna become best friends and you know, yeah you know, no one hangs out. There. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. That okay. That makes sense. So then so wait, oh, so you moved dollars for a corona? Perfect. I'll take two. <laughs> you know, it's like, so yeah. so then you moved back to Texas? Yeah. And then moved back to LA, which yeah. you've and then you've stayed since. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. So like was that moving back? I mean, did that help out? Like I'm just kind of like I don't even know like the phrase, but just to kind of like have like a little relaxation period and kind of like recollect yourself is that kind of like what what happened well it was kind of like a rehab in a way and then okay. you know because i was kind of back home in my in my in my safe space you know my mm-hmm. family was there and and then i got a job in lake tahoe where i was doing some theater work and so i had okay. a whole summer i had a whole summer a whole summer stock there with them and you know we mm-hmm. were doing some shows so it kept me on my toes it kept me performing it kept me on stage 
And uh, a friend of mine, Kate, she was like, hey, let's move to LA at the end of the summer. And I was like, uh, I already did that. It was, uh, yeah. it's not for me. I don't, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let me think about it. And then had I not done that, you mm -hmm. know, I wouldn't be where I'm at. You know, I wouldn't be yeah. a comedian on, at, you know, I wouldn't, I, I don't know where I'd be. It'd probably be some like, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm probably sure I'd be some teacher. I don't know. I, not yeah. that's bad, but I think, I, no. I don't know. I feel like I'd be like, I don't know, a counselor. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I have no idea. Damn. I have no idea where or what I'd be right now. Dude, uh, I, I, had I went back. I just, I can't I imagine like a either. restaurant manager. Like, like. I could see that. Like a, like a, like a, like a cheddars like a, or something. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. I, I, I take it back. Not cheddar, or something like more like upscale. A, like, 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 like at Papa Do's or something. Okay, well, that's, you know, that's kind of classy. So, like a Bennigan's. <laughs> oh, God. No, well, never mind. <laughs> dream big, guys. Dream big. <laughs> yeah, dream big. Look at Bennigan's. Don't settle for cheddars. There's always a Bennigan's. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Damn. Dude, I just can't imagine. Like, I was, I mean, like, I, I quit drinking like two and a half years ago. And I can't imagine if I would have, like, been a millionaire as a kid. Like I would have made like Charlie Sheen look like fucking Kirk Cameron. Like yeah. it would have been, God, it would have been a disaster. So I think there's something about like having to work really hard. Cause I'm yeah. sure like, I mean, you know, like you have your, you know, I mean, fame is a weird fucking word, but like, you, you know, like you have a lot of success now, but it took you, I'm sure a pretty long time to get it. So you probably like kind of cherish it more. You know? Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's the best payoff. I like, you know, I guess call me old fashioned, but it's like, I like, work. <laughs> I like having to work for having to work for it. And when, once the, yeah. when the work starts paying off and you can start seeing like, Oh yeah, this is cool. You know, I'd rather like, I personally, I would like to not consider myself a flash in the pan. You know, I feel yeah. like, you know, the, you know, who's to say when, when TikTok is, is done or, you know, we, there mm -hmm. was fine and look where that is, that's gone. You know, there was, yeah, um, yeah. you know, there, now it's, you know, it, it just kind of, I, I hate the, I hate the term famous now because I just feel like it's anybody can be famous. It's yeah. like, oh, you're that guy who like, you know, fell off a balcony and it got like <laughs> 75 million views and you're like, yeah. yeah that that was me and it's like here you're you know like even the even the last summer it was like the guy on the skateboard with the ocean spray cranberry juice yeah 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 you know, it's like that guy everyone was like that that's that's our dude that is our dude and you're like okay yeah. cool but like congrats you you had a little moment you know i want to keep that moment going it's like yeah that's why it's it's weird because i see and this is no no shade or anything. I feel like if mm -hmm. you're if you're a comedian or if you're a, an influencer or whatever you want to call yourself, I feel like yeah. If you're if you can put together a little sketch on Instagram, if you can put together a little video on TikTok, do it. If you yeah. can put a funny meme up or whatever, but it's like me personally as an I call myself an artist because I like getting mm -hmm. up in front of hundreds of thousands of people and making mm -hmm. them all laugh rather than like yeah. Here's here's this little edited clip that I made and it's funny, but there you go yeah and then hearts 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 comments 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 it's like cool no i'd rather like put up the work than go outside and have a cocktail and then have somebody from the room come out and be like oh my god that was so great i like that interaction that like actual face-to-face -face, yeah you know but then also your art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but also like your art is like highly personal so there's yeah. something even more rewarding because like, you know, I mean, if you're a musician, like a like a Lou Reed type, like, yeah, his lyrics are super personal, but he could always, you know, hide behind a guitar or a band. You don't have any of that shit. Like, it's just no. you. And so if somebody likes it, that's got to feel even better than if you were like a musician or an actor or something, because it's like 100 percent you and that's it. Yeah, and it's almost it's almost like an audition, you know, with an audience. Okay. So it's okay. like it's like okay, here's the next person, and and like here's the audience, and the audience is just sitting there, like, okay, who's this? You know, and so it's like, 
Hello, my name is Justin Martindale, and I will be performing a 15 minute long monologue for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, they're, yeah. and, you know, and if you can keep people in their seats for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, mm -hmm. 45 an hour, like, mm -hmm. go for it. Well, I think that's the, the thing is that so many people, like myself included, you know, like, if we can make our friends laugh, then we're like, oh, I could probably be a comedian. I don't think it's quite the same thing because just off the simple fact that I, if I'm making my friends laugh, I could do it whenever the fuck I want. But if you're right. on stage, you have to be funny right now. And these people don't know you. There's no frame of reference. There's no inside jokes. Like it's just, I don't know. I think that that's the, the, the difference, you know, yeah. there are the big, I mean, there's a ton of differences, but that's the big one. Yeah, you have to once once you step out onto that stage, you have to like leave everything behind and you have to leave mm -hmm. yourself behind in a weird way. You kind of have to like come out of your own comfort zone and be like, you know, this you yeah. have to kind of be like who you have to you're bearing your soul pretty much. You're bearing, mm -hmm. you know, your beliefs, your ideals, your you know, your humor, you know, you, your, your, your boundaries, like, mm -hmm. it's a weird, it's a weird art that once you realize and you grab a hold of it, like, like the power that it has, you know, yeah. and it's weird because it's like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say something on stage or I'll say something, you know, online, or I'll put up something on my Instagram stories and people are just like, oh my mm -hmm. God, I was just having the worst day. And then this just made me laugh so hard. So thank you. So it is that's my favorite thing about the whole thing is just you know mm -hmm. changing people's lives or just you know yeah. making them laugh have you know if they're having a shitty day or whatever that's 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 what i know i'm doing my job mm -hmm. it's, it's not yeah. money it's not it's not fame i mean mm -hmm. money is good <laughs> but yeah yeah you know it's 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 the ability to actually connect with a complete mm -hmm. stranger is really weird and kind of sexy at the same time. <laughs> Definitely. You know what I mean? Like, not sexy, like, ah, but like, you know, it's yeah. just sort of like, oh, oh, you, okay, you get it. You get it. I like that. Yeah. You know? I, a hundred percent. Like, I, I mean, obviously, like, I'm not a comic, so I don't really know it, but I can get like how it's just fucking, it's got to be addicting to, to have that feeling, you know? I don't know. Like, yeah. I mean, some people more so than others, you know, there's some people mm -hmm. that I watch and they, you know, I mean, one of the ones that comes to mind is Eliza Schlesinger. I mean, she does not stop. It is yeah. crazy. Like every night, every night, mm -hmm. every, like she, she's doing like a tour. She's doing like, I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane yeah. how, like, I, 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 I really admire her work ethic because it's yeah. just nuts. I'll do like two or three shows a night, if that, and I'm like, I am in for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like last night, last night, you know, like I was hanging out uh, with some comics and they're like, oh, did you go up already? And I'm like, oh yeah, I went up at, I went up at nine. It was like 10, yeah. 15. And they're like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't yeah. need to be like, I gotta go here. And now I gotta go here. It's like, relax. Yeah. It's Wednesday, you know, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can get that for sure. So get, tell me about the, the podcast. My podcast? Yeah. 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 Oh, my podcast is everything. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually started it with my best friend, Justine Marino, and uh, she's a comedian as well. And um, so it's Justin and Justine. And we have just been friends for like 10 plus years. We have lived together at certain points. We have, uh, we, we're just like this like weird buddy comedy duo where, you know, we call each other like several times a day. We'll, we'll, we, we send each other, you know, articles. It's pretty much, it's a, it's a pop culture, nostalgic, podcast so we'll talk about like you know what shows we're watching right now like we just finished on our patreon a, a recap of white lotus which is a fantastic show um yeah and then we'll talk about you know we talked about fred durst we watched the woodstock documentary we talk about 1999 we'll talk about you know we talk about the free britney movement we talk about mm -hmm. all the stuff that like 
we think is really, really glittery or just really, really garbagey. So, you know, and we also okay. talk about our lives, like um, what we did, you know, during the week. I talk about my camping trip. I talk about, you know, my my wild ride that I had in Vegas this couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. Um, so yeah, we it's 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 personal. It's engaging. It comes out every Monday on iTunes and Spotify, and it's awesome. it's it's really really fun. We actually just joined the All Things Comedy Network on. Uh, okay, that's Bill, that's Bill Burr's network. So yeah, yeah, they're on there as well. Okay, dude, awesome man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, hey, quick question: Have you watched Val, the Val Kilmer documentary? No, is it out? I haven't seen it yet. Yes. Oh okay. my god. Yeah. Do you? Is it good? Uh, it's the greatest okay like I'm not like a a crier really I was crying like a baby six and a half minutes in I was like oh it's like I mean because he's just gone through like you know he can't talk anymore like a couple years ago at a I went to one of his art he had like an art installation and uh yeah yeah and uh, and Jeff Jeff Ross and um my friend Kai and who or Kai Kai Aaron's who's a um, he's a mm-hmm. fantastic artist. I guess they collaborated on something and they okay. they put up this art gallery uh, of his of his uh, work. So Dude, yeah, it's, I saw it's him incredible. and I was incredible. Like, uh, yeah, well, because it's just like he recorded all this home video footage for forty years and like every you know they're showing him as like a young guy like a Top Gun and shit. And I was like, oh my god, like Val Kilmer was. Like it probably bumped me to like a 4.8 on the Kinsey scale. Like I was like, holy shit. Like Val Kilmer was a attractive dude that just hunk, yeah. things went downhill. But no, I just really? throw it out. Yeah, you gotta watch it. It's it's so good. Okay, but uh it no, I have a it's on Amazon Prime. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's like an Amazon Prime special. So yeah. No, it's it's great. But uh, I had the I know I'm kind of running over time, but I got a few yeah, like little just Okay, I got a few like little just fast questions sure, for you. Sure. Um, so, what's a movie everyone loves but you hate? Oh God, um, Barb and Star, Go to Vista Del Mar. <laughs> That's that came out like last year, and I just thought, oh no, let me think of another one. I have another one. Hold on, a movie that everyone <laughs> loves and I hate. Yeah, I'll give you mine if you want. Okay, uh, for Forrest Gump. Oh, you hate Forrest Gump? Hate, I hate that movie so much. I'm going to go. Oh, I hate it. Why, why, why do you hate that? It's too unbelievable. Well, there's, yeah. there's no way. Like, Avatar is more believable than that oh, shit. Oh, I love Avatar. Um, <laughs> really and Jenny one. gave him, you know, a deadly virus, so. A movie that everyone loves and I hate. Oh, my God. Um, I'm going to have to. Uh, uh <laughs> I mean I'm I'll, I'll go with like Scarface. Really? Okay. I don't care. I got gotcha. you. Every time I can I don't know, it just reminds me of like I get it, like say hello to my little friend and da, 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 uh-huh. uh, but it always just reminds me of like those like douchebag guys in college with their Scarface posters on their wall. Yeah. So I, can, I, don't I, can, I, I don't even know if I've ever seen Scarface. I just, it's, it's one that I'm just kind of like, eh, all right, whatever. Well, they're remaking it so you can watch the remake. Of course so. they are. Of course With they my, are. Michael B. Jordan is playing Tony Montana. So. Oh, great. That's where we're at. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, what's a, a conspiracy or like urban legend that you wish was true? Ooh, um an urban legend that i wish was yeah. true or conspiracy either one oh my god i don't i mean anything halloween like i'm i'm very like i love halloween and i love i mean i watch ghost stories and like you know okay i don't know like like I love I love like werewolves. <laughs> like I wish werewolves were real. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, a good va- one. I wish vampires were real. Mine, know, Area Fifty One is see, one. See, va- vampires for urban legend. That's mine because Lost Boys was such a yeah. huge movie to me. Like uh-huh. I wanted to be Kiefer Sutherland, also along with Fred Durst. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 Kiefer like, Durst. Yeah, Kiefer, <laughs> Kiefer Durst. Yeah. yeah, I just like I always I you know I think vampires. I don't know. I feel like that weird, like 
folklore. There's a there's a really good podcast that I listen to called Lore. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I listen to it too. Oh, yeah. I love it. So yeah. Much. Oh, it's but great. Aaron Mankey, uh, he mm-hmm. does it. It's it's oh, it's so good. I'll and like during October, like I'll just I'll just binge all the ones that I haven't listened to. So I mean, yeah. it's just really cool. I love those like stories of just like you know where where do these stories originate mm-hmm. from? Um, yeah. I mean every story kind of originated from somewhere and yeah for for it's weird weirdly enough we had a on my podcast that's coming out on monday we have a, an actor and a musician named spencer sutherland who's about to pop mm-hmm. the fuck off he's yeah. amazing he's in the new i know what you did last summer um uh series they're doing for amazon oh okay and so i watched i know what you did last summer just to kind of be, like I was like oh yeah what did this what did this entail and there's a, a, yeah. a scene with Freddie Prince Jr and he's like they're talking about the 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 man with the hook hand uh-huh. and the boyfriend and the girlfriend are in the car kissing and then yeah. you know he gets out to check the car or something and they hear like drip drip or they hear a, a scratch on it and they're like no it was this it was this it was this and it's like oh it's actually a real story because yeah it had to come from somewhere yeah, you're talking um, about when they're when they're on the beach yeah yeah, that, yeah 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 oh my yeah. god i love that i fucking love that i, I just love stories like that of like where, where did that originate from yeah yeah so I, I would, yeah I'll, I'll go with vampires i wish vampires were like that's real. that's a good one and i guess you kind of answer my next question do you believe in ghosts yes oh my god, I, <laughs> have have seen... in, I have one in my apartment do you really yes i have a i have a um it's not a it's not a mean ghost it's just uh-huh. so this building that I live in, like it's got. It was built in the year 1932, so right off okay. the bat, haunted. Yeah. So like there you, you go. see, like you see these little like. Okay, where's my finger? There it is. I'm like a weatherman mm-hmm. right now. It's gonna be cloudy, <laughs> cloudy over here. We got a high coming in. Um, <laughs> so these are all like like fixtures. This one right uh-huh. over here used to be where. Hold on, where is it? Right here. So this yeah. used to be where like the phone was, like the hello operator, like that used to be uh-huh. right here. And there's like shelves down here. These used to be little bungalows that they would put actors um, in for like the movie. So they'd be like, oh yeah, so we're working on this movie and we're going to put you guys in here. So this is okay. like, and so, I mean, you don't get a lot of like old buildings because all the old buildings in LA right now are kind of being torn down and, you know, they're putting up these like massive palaces and mm-hmm. call them McMansions out here. And yeah, um, yeah. And so, there's definitely like some history in here. Right? Like outside, there's just like this really long hallway. Like Ronald Reagan before he was president, like when he was an actor, state lived here. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like some ghosts, and ghosts find a way to like say hi to me. It's very so strange. I always had that as a kid. Do you hear anything, or is it just like little, I don't know, like little disturbances? It's like you know, I'll have like uh, I'm like. I'll have like a uh, like a door like a door will open, or it's it's nothing malicious. Like, um, you mean like how the one just opened behind you? Yeah, pretty much. No, Did kidding. that just happen? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. This one, this one has opened before. Oh really? Um, just... <laughs> but it is crazy because like last, and it's not just my apartment. It's I think it's the building. I think because yeah, we I didn't hear um that, like the, there was like some dude like before i lived here there was like a guy mm-hmm. who like overdosed in his apartment he died um the uh the, the the latest one that i had was out here i had like a we put all of our trash out in the back of the building uh-huh. and so like we have to get our key to like get back in and so like i had my key and i looked up real quick and i saw this like silhouette of uh, a person yeah it was really quick and i looked back down and i'm unlocking it and then i opened it and that was gone <laughs> and so i was oh, like fuck and so as i'm walking to my apartment um like like oh i'm getting goosebumps now like my <laughs> whole body was just like chills i was just like that like like you could feel like there was something mm-hmm. there and i immediately opened my door and like scooted in like 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 that would stop them from getting yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like deadbolted the deadbolted the door but yeah, yeah definitely i definitely definitely believe in ghosts see sure. that's that's how i like i'm uh, ghosts i kind of believe in demons is a little different because demons i just kind of like i say i believe in it on the off chance that like 
I don't want to say I don't and then have one think, oh, really? You don't believe in me, bitch? And then like start fucking with me. So I just go like, oh, yeah, they're probably you're real. Like Fred Durst. Get, us, get in, bitch. <laughs> Marilyn Manson, perfect. Oh, God. Yeah, that's probably gotten me a few already. Yeah. yeah demons, I think demons are... A- Demons are a little more, I don't know, terrifying for me. And I, I, I don't want to like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I can handle, I can handle a ghost, but like the minute yeah. I see the minute I see a five-year-old crawling on the ceiling, I'm out. Like I can't, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. Yeah. Yeah. I have no time. I have, I, you, you take care of Ashley. I'm going to go to brunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you're, if, okay. One last thing. So if your ghost could be any celebrity, that is dead who do you wish that ghost could be oh james dean for sure i got gotcha. you all right james That's, dean for sure damn see i Woo. i'd i'd like to have a marlon brando one just to hear some heavy breathing at night and know oh, it's yeah. not me <laughs> <laughs> just is that your sleep apnea no that's marlon brando oh, <laughs> Sorry. yeah i have a marlon brando under my bed and <laughs> just yeah <laughs> Yeah, just every once. My bad. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I. I mean, yeah, James Dean was a good-looking dude. Marlon Brando wasn't too bad either until he ate. Yeah, you I know, think they were all ate. sluts. They were all they were all like bisexual sluts. I think that's classic Hollywood. Yeah, well, you know, Brando used to like have sex with Richard Pryor. So yeah. there's that. I mean, Brando was Brando was slinging it around to anybody. All of them were. They all anybody. were. Oh yeah, yeah. They all were. I think it was it was so taboo at the time, but they all were just like whatever. Yeah, I mean, even like Cary Grant and Spencer Tracy, like you know, like Rock way Hudson. back. But yeah, Rock, I mean, Rock Hudson was like the first. That I think people were like, oh, okay, they there might be some something going on, but yeah, 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 man. No, and he was the first celebrity to die of AIDS. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's. God, that's why one of them, I think. I, but yeah, I mean, first, like, what? <laughs> I think there have been ones that have come out like more recently that were like, oh, that's probably what they died from, but they were mm-hmm. just not either not knowing that that's what it was or were like, eh, let's not say, well, let's say pneumonia. Like, that's a big right, thing. Right, right. Yes, you know, pneumonia you know I mean? or a yeah. <laughs> new cancer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Well, dude, I yeah, I've I've kept you too long, but I yeah, I, I'm fine. I just love that we ended it on AIDS. That's great. Yeah, maybe we <laughs> as as most things do, you know. So <laughs> very true. Oh God. Yeah. Well, do you want to add something to it so we don't? No, I'm good. All right. Hey, I'm I'm good with it if you're good with it. Awesome. Oh man, I dude, I appreciate it so much. This has been really a blast talking with you. Yeah, you too. It's been it's been really fun. I'm glad I'm glad we worked it out. 